Can I get the Can I get the rear pro rear projector on, Seth? Okay. Can you turn down the music, Seth? <laughs> the music. <laughs> okay. Or I could talk over it. Uh, all right. Hello, everyone. Hi, thank you so much for your patience and thank you for toughing the rain and, and coming out to orientation today. Um, so my name is Danielle um, and I am the day camp manager here and I'm pretty sure I have either emailed, talked to you on the phone, seen you in person or otherwise throughout this process. So I'm happy that we are finally here and that camp is finally starting on Monday. Um, how excited are you guys to have your kids in day camp starting on my, okay, I thought so. It's been a long year <laughs> um, and I'm just happy to, to be here at this point. Um, so we're just going to go through um, just some, some things that you should know um, as we're getting ready for camp. Um, and then from here, we're going to dismiss you to some of the classrooms um, to meet with the counselors and pick up your t-shirts, okay? Um, if you came and you have um, just things you need handled, you know, you want to switch rooms or something's wrong with the t-shirts, we're going to invite you back after you go out there to come back and chat with us in the, in the chapel if you have any customer service needs, okay? Um, so let's just um, jump in, shall we? All right. So, um, just this year at camp, we are really just focusing on our, our combination of faith and fun, um, where we um, kind of go outside of some of the walls of the church, and we want to really put an emphasis on both things equally. Um, so we have here just the mission of the Salvation Army. It's an international movement, um, an international movement. It's an evangelical part of the universal Christian church. And its message is based on the Bible. Its ministry is motivated by the love of God. And its mission is to preach the gospel um, and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. So that's just kind of the focus here at the Salvation Army and at the Croc Center that will also be phased into um, camp. Okay. So vital information for your everyday life. Um, our dates for session one are June 28th, so that's Monday, until July 23rd. There is no camp on Monday, July 5th, in an observation of Independence um, Day. And then session two begins July 26th and goes until um, August 20th. Um, our times are Monday through Friday, 9 to 3 every day. Um, there is before care that begins at 6.30 and goes until 9 a.m. And then there's after care that goes from 3 o'clock to 6 p.m. Okay. So for drop-off every day, it'll happen um, outside um, unless it's raining. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have um, people that will meet you as you pull around the lot to this, this center lane here. Um, and they will quickly have the forehead thermometer, take your child's temperature, ask a few daily screening questions, um, you know, about temperature, cough, um, any new, you know, bumps, bruises, anything we should know about. Um, and then we'll have you initial, and then the kids will be dismissed, and their counselors will be waiting, waiting for them in the lawn over here. Um, unless it's raining and then we'll dismiss and we'll bring them all into the chapel area. 
um, basically as part of our um, drop off, if your temperature, if the temperature of your child is above 100.4 degrees, then we would ask, you know, that they go home for the day and they may come back tomorrow. And if that temperature is resolved, that's fine. If they come back the next day and still have the above average temperature, then we would ask for either a doctor's note or a negative COVID test for them to resume camp. Great, okay. Um, and um, if a child is in that predicament where they have a high temperature or they are showing symptoms and they have siblings, we would ask that the siblings stay as well until the issue is resolved just to minimize any spread of anything among camp. Daily health screenings is kind of what I was just telling you guys about. These are the, the um, four, four or five questions that will be asked every, every morning um, to, your, to you and your camp representative. Um, I should also say at drop off, um, at drop off, you will also receive um, a camper card that will have your camper's name on it. It's a laminated card, your camper's name on it, as well as their tribe. This is what's necessary for them to be picked up at the end of the day. Um, we'll still be verifying authorized people, but we ask that you bring the card or have a picture of it in your phone. I recommend everyone take a picture of it so it's easy to share if someone else is picking up or something like that. But that is what releases your camper is us giving it to the authorized person and then you guys having either the picture or the real form of the card for um, pickup. And for pickup, you'll pull into the lot on what would be this left side over here. Um, and we'll have people meet you there and quickly get your camper's name and their tribe. It'll be radioed to the counselors over here so that by the time you pull up here, your camper is ready to get in the car and everything's been taken care of. Um, so we just ask that you enter the lot um, on, on this left-hand side. Yes, or a, or, a, or a picture of it, yes. Yes, yep. Um, so late pickup is very important to us that you pick your kid up on time. Um, there's a $5 late fee that will be charged after the first five minutes and a dollar for each additional minute. Um, it'll be, that cutoff time um, is 5 p.m if your child is not enrolled in aftercare to be picked up, we will reach out to every possible person that we can, emergency contacts, authorized pickup. And if no one is reached and has told us anything about the camper being picked up, then we will have to call the proper authorities to handle that situation. And that time, if you are enrolled in aftercare, is 7 p.m. No, there is not. Um, drop off begins as early as 8.50, so no one will be allowed to drop off before 8.50 unless they're in our, our before care. Um, and uh, if they're coming in later, we ask that you walk your child into the building, into the day camp office, and then we will be able to find where their group is and get them to their group. Thank you, Kelly. Um, okay, so here's our packing list for day camp, also found in your day camp um, guidebook. Um, so your kids should be wearing their camp t-shirt every day and bring in a backpack, a water bottle, or two to three frozen bottles of water, please no glass, um, closed toe shoes, um, an emergency change of clothes, their bathing suit and towel, um, when you go to your counselor's rooms, um, they have a copy of the schedule and they'll be able to tell you the days that your child has swimming. Um, they'll swim twice a week, so you'll be prepared for that. Um, goggles, a Bible and writing utensils, hand sanitizer, reusable masks. Um, we will be continuing um, to wear masks through camp this summer. Um, with the exception being when they are socially distanced and outside and they're able to maintain that social distance. 
um, or when they're inside the facility, and then that steps into that is when they're eating or drinking. Yes, ma'am. Additional t-shirts available for purchase? No, we do not. Um, so everyone will get two t-shirts today, and then during their first week of camp, they'll also make an additional t-shirt, which will be a tie-dye, which can also be rotated in. So each child will have three shirts. Hold up. Let me get you the mic. Oh, thank you, Ms. Brenda. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Um, is there a specific type of Bible um, that the children should have? No, there's not a specific one. Um, they'll kind of use it in what we call tribe time, um, which will have things printed out for them, um, but any version is okay. Um, I do love the Jesus Storybook Bible for the day camp age, um, which is available on Amazon, um, but any anyone is okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, so reusable masks, we still will be masking all summer long, spray, sunscreen, um, lotion, especially for those pool days, and then a sealable plastic bag um, for their swimwear after swimming is done. Just a minute, ma'am. Just a minute. Sorry. We want everybody to hear the question. Okay. Where it's is right it? up here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Please. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Would, would the kids have any mass breaks throughout the day? Yes. So if they're outside and in a situation where they can maintain their social distance, they definitely can unmask in that situation. I mean, I know they'll be playing certain sports and things, and, you know, the counselor knows to separate them and let's take a breather. So they will have certain certain breaks throughout the day, but any time that that distance can't be maintained or they're really inside the facility, which makes them be a little bit closer, they'll be asked to wear them. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thank you. Okay. Question. So, yeah. Are there um, swim lessons, or do you, uh, or will there be um, a lifeguard there for those that can't swim? Mm -hmm. um, so there will be, um, I believe, two to three lifeguards um, present at each swim session, um, and their counselors will be there as well, who are CPR certified um, to be with them. But it's not instructional swim, so it will all be recreational. The two times that they swim each week. Um, and there is barriers and separations from the deep end of the pool, and none of the kids will be allowed into the deep end without passing a swim test with the lifeguard. Ms. Brenda, you have any other questions? Would I be able to uh, bring my son's life vest? I will have to get back to you. I want to make sure I tell you the right thing after I check in with the swim manager regarding um, floats that are acceptable. Um, would you know, Kelly? Yeah, so I'll talk to the swim manager and we'll have that information for you. If, 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 her, if children are allowed to bring their own life vests and flotation devices. Um, so some prohibited items um, that your child should not bring to camp, cell phones, other electronic devices, toys, and non-camp related attire. Um, <laughs> yes. So what if your children are walking because they're not very far and the cell phone is needed so the oldest one can check in? That's still prohibited? I would say in that situation that the cell phone should not be seen by us at all during the day. Um, and also that the Salvation Army is not responsible if it's lost or broken or stolen. Um, so we can, we can chalk it up to that, that if, if it is, you know, an emergency or something like that. But we should at no point during the day see the cell phone. Um, if it is seen, then it is liable to be confiscated by the counselors and held in the day camp office until a parent is available to come pick it up. Good question. Okay. And that's basically our, our, our... One more. Oh, okay. I do have another question about the cell phone. Um, what if you have a child that's gonna be getting picked up by another parent or something like that? Um, are they, is the camp counselor able to keep that child's cell phone until the end of camp? 
um, if there's no, you know, occasion like that. If it's confiscated and it needs to be picked up, yeah, is that what you're saying? Not confiscated. If when the child arrived at camp, they gave it to the camp counselor and had them keep it for them until the end of camp. Oh, no, in that situation, the camp counselor would not be able to keep the cell phone just for liability reasons. Um, so that's why we're kind of saying, you know, blanket statement, no cell phones. And if it is, it's that camper's responsibility um, for what happens to it that day. But the counselors wouldn't be able to. So basically, Danielle, my camper can have, if they need their phone, if they're walking home, they can have their phone with them in the bag, stored away, but the phone cannot be out during activities and stuff. It cannot be out or it will be confiscated. And it is cool, also cool. not our responsibility if it is lost or stolen or broken. All right. So you're not saying don't have it at all. <laughs> you're just saying do not have, don't, it should not be out during any of our activities and stuff. I'm saying that if you can keep your cell phone home and away from your child, I highly recommend it. <laughs> But I understand that it is a situation by situation. Kids who are walking home are getting picked up, things like that. So um, it is on your, it is really up to you guys. But that's our, our rules for how it'll go if it's seen during camp. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, dress code. So all clothing worn by campers must be appropriate for summer activities. We encourage you guys to dress campers in clothing and shoes that you don't mind getting dirty or stained in the course of your child engaging in um, summer activities. So just to go a little bit more into that, um, day camp t-shirts must be worn every day. For those who have counselors who are in JCC, the Junior Camp Counselor Program, they wear their shirts Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesdays, they are allowed to wear something else that fits within our dress code policy. Still no halters or, or, or tank tops or anything like that. Um, unless a field trip is scheduled, but this year we are not doing field trips. So this was a policy adopted by our, our former cream team, Croc, Croc City Team Program. Um, and we kind of kept it in place that on Wednesdays they, they get the opportunity to have a break from that, but it's still their clothing still needs to fall within our dress code policy. Um, alteration of summer program t-shirts is not allowed. Um, shorts must be worn at a knee length preferably, but no shorter than the fingertip length and no skirts, please. Um, the following are not allowed at all, and that would be halters, spaghetti strap, tube top, short shorts two-piece swimsuits, sagging up the pants, shorts, or any other revealing item. Um, and then we ask for gym shoes and closed toe um, sandals. No flip-flops are allowed um, during camp activities, but if they bring them for the time that they have swim, they can wear them on the swim deck. And then, as, especially for swimming, um, we said that one-piece swimsuit only and swim, um, for girls and then swim trunks, that they must be lined um, and for swim, um, not like basketball shorts or anything like that. They have to be actual swim trunks for the boys. And we ask that you please label all of your campers' belongings with um, a permanent black marker before coming. Um, if a camper arrives in something that is outside of this dress code policy, you will be called and asked to either bring them a change of clothes um, or um, to pick them up for the day. Okay. Miss Danielle, we have a quick question. Oh, okay. um, uh -huh. There will be only one camp field trip this year. Sorry? There will be only one camp field trip this yeah. year. Um, we're, so we replaced the um, camp field trips um, with Wednesday special events. So um, instead of so instead of field trips, we will have um, our Wednesday events are um, a scales and tails, a traveling tube, um, a rock wall climbing a silent disco, bubble soccer, a day at the movies, and various other things that we'll have throughout the summer. Question over here. 
this is in relation to um, the clothing. Are leggings appropriate? Leggings are fine. And like a hoodie or like if she gets cold a lot, like can she? A jacket is fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just have more for Sonia. Um, as I said earlier, that um, there will be lifeguards available and all of the trained CPR staff um, for swimming times. And then this year and following with COVID restrictions, um, many of you know that the number for camp um, was originally 150, and then we were able to open our camp to facilitate more campers, which is great news, but we're still not letting up on a lot of our cleaning things that we maintained through COVID. Um, so after every activity, um, everything will be sanitized. Our bathrooms will be cleaned um, at least two or three times throughout the day. Um, and then locker rooms will be cleaned and disinfected as well. Um, and then our campers and our staff will um, remain sanitized. Okay. So this is all spelled out a little bit more in the handbook that you have. Um, I just wanted to make sure to put it before you that there is a code of conduct here at camp and violation of these things uh, will lead to um, different warnings and mediations, but ultimately depending on the severity of it, and it is at, the, at my discretion that your kid may be asked to leave camp um, if we find that there is not a solution or, again, depending on the severity of, of, of what has happened. So just to make sure that this is outlined just in front of you guys, and it's also something you can find in the handbook, that there is a code of conduct that we're expecting you to follow this summer. So with our disciplinary procedures, the first incident is that you'll be notified with a written warning. Um, on the second incident, um, you'll be also notified with a warning for suspension or dismissal. And then a third time that it happens um, can lead to dismissal from the program. Um, and we'll be in communication usually long before any of that. And hopefully, especially none of us will go through this this summer. But that, that is a thing. Okay. All right. Um, and for illness, we just ask that if your child is staying home because they are feeling um, ill, to let us know. Um, we'll be taking attendance daily, um, and our administrator will be in touch with you if the child um, is not in camp, just as a wellness check. Um, but please contact us and let us know, and especially um, if it is something um, COVID-related. Yes, Skylar. Yes. So I know you all won't be close to the general public during this time. So when the kids are in the pool, how are you all going to be able to distinguish from someone just coming with their child? It'll be close. It'll, it's close to the general public. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. No problem. Um, and then for, because we walked through a lot of this in the registration process, we will not be administering over-the-counter um, medications or anything to your children. If your children requires medication, meaning an asthma pump, EpiPen, or anything like that, um, they've already been asked to submit um, an action plan and a physician statement um, just so we can be best um, equipped and prepared to serve your child. Question. Yes. Um, Kind of going back to a couple slides before when you were saying about like um, kids stuff that you're not responsible or, or, or somebody's kids take something someone else's. How are their belongings secured? So they come with their book bag. What, what happens with it? Is it in a locker or is it where do you put it at? And how often do they have access to it? Good question. Um, each group will have a, a landing spot this summer, like a classroom. Um, none of our classrooms can be accessed to anyone who is outside of the, the crack. Um, we all, it's all lock and key. Um, so they'll be locked in or they'll have it on them. Um, and the counselor will make sure to keep all belongings with that child. Um, 
but they, they'll be secured away um, in those rooms this summer. There it is. Oh, I got it. Okay. Wow, that ain't even fast. I mean, thank you. Hi. With regard to the junior campers, I just want to kind of make sure everything is the same. As far as like the belonging, for instance, if they bring their lunch or they have belongings, are they secured in the, however, you, I forgot how you said they're secured. The classroom. Uh, they're secured in the classroom, so like their lunch would just be in the classroom with everybody else's and their stuff would be in the classroom with everyone else's. Yes, ma'am, with their group. Okay. Make, so not the whole camp kind of sort together. It would be group by group. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Masks. Masks. Yeah, um, I was just wondering about the lanyards. Will they be able to preload with money and like they did a couple years ago? No, um, the cafe isn't open. Okay. Um, so there wouldn't be any need for them to have money. Um, there is a vending machine that has like Gatorade and things, um, but that just takes cash if you send them with a couple dollars, but um, they wouldn't have a need for it this year. Thank you. Um, and this slide is basically, again, to put in front of you, it's in the handbook that all staff has been trained on the emergency plans regarding the croc, um, everything from inclement weather um, to fire drills and things of that sort. Lunch will be provided for campers um, every day that they are here. Um, and it is a cold lunch um, that will be served to them at their lunch time. You are welcome to send your kid um, with lunch, especially if there are allergies or preferences or anything like that. Um, but just to let you know that this is an option for you that they can partake in the in the lunch program when you have lunch for them. Do you have a question? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, they can. Good. Thank you. No <laughs> peanuts. Please do not send your children with any. Um, we have severe nut allergies that have already been kind of foreseen. So no peanuts um, and, and no tree nuts either. Question. Do you have a menu of the items you're going to be giving to the kids every day? or? I was told that the company would give us a menu. Um, I don't think that it will be available, unfortunately, until Monday. So if we have it in hand before Monday morning, the people who are checking you in, I'll make sure they hand that over. Um, but as of right now, we don't have a menu. Question. Um, I had a two-part question. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was the menu. Is I heard what you just said, but it's very imperative that some parents, preferably myself, get a menu. Um, and second, my second question is, how many camp counselors are there to each camp group? Two. There's two, there's two camp counselors in each tribe, mm -hmm. in each group. Oh, so the Junior Camp Counselor Program, um, for those who are not familiar with it, we have 14 to 17 year olds who get to work or alongside of the camp counselors this summer. So each group will have one or two Junior Camp Counselors assigned to them and they do that in the morning. So from nine until about lunchtime at 12, um, they are assisting, um, but, and they'll be, um, kind of just trained on things that they can do, leading games and things like that. But our junior camp counselors are not responsible for the groups. They are not allowed to be alone with the campers in any way, um, just a certain protections for them, but they will get hands-on experience with the kids. Um, and then their program um, really breaks off from that one o'clock to three o'clock at the end of the day where they have their own um, activities and their own programming for the day. So every morning at 9 to 12, each group will have a junior camp counselor present. Okay. Danielle, no there's another question. Uh, uh, I no, it's right here. Uh, the question is, well, let me see if I remember right. Uh, if a camper, you have your disciplinary, your one, two, and three um, warnings, is there a situation where a camper can be suspended after the first warning? Are there situations... Just to clarify, there are situations that yes. a camper can be immediately removed from camp. Just yes. getting a warning. Thank you. There we go. Yes. Um, and that was kind of at the, the bottom, but it's also spelled out in the handbook that um, depending on the severity of the situation or what the infraction was, 
but that's at the discretion of the day camp leadership team that they um that they may uh <laughs> that they may uh uh may not make it to a third strike. Danielle, uh, another question yeah. is, I'm sorry, no, you're uh, fine. what is the ratio um, for the camp groups? Two to 22. Okay. Up to two to 22. Many groups have less, 19, 18, 20, but uh, they have the capacity for two to 22. Thank you. Bradley. Yeah. To pay that up front. You don't have to pay it up front. It is on an as needed basis. We're talking about before and after care. Um, each one costs forty dollars, and we ask that the payment be made the week prior for the week leading into it, so we can be prepared with staff. Um, so it, it would be on the week before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can we pay for before care today? You can. Okay. At the front desk. Yes, ma'am. We had another. Okay. <laughs> it will be a whole week. It's not prorated by day. And that's forty per child for like if I just got aftercare because I got three kids. Yes. So, you get value for that? <laughs> I mean, I do got three kids. There isn't a discount available for not the before like after. Five-time campers. A what? Just five-time campers, volume discount, membership, no, nothing, nothing. No, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Danielle, is yeah. uh, is breakfast included in the before care? It is not. It is um, not. The, the services that we're using provide um, provide lunch and an afternoon snack. Well, that essentially is the end of my slideshow. Now I would like to um, send you to your groups, okay? Um, all righty. So the counselors are in place um, to, to be able to assist you. And then I have people in the hallway with lists as well. Um, if, if I, you guys get a little confused in the process, they'll be able to point you in the right direction, okay? Um, so do you have any other questions that I can help you with? Absolutely, yes, sir. So for the day, um, or for the before care, mm -hmm. can they come with breakfast? Like, if I drop her off and she has food with her, can she eat that in before care? Yes, okay. yes, good question. the extra t-shirt that first week so they end up with three shirts to work they do yep. Okay. Yep. yep everyone will be tie dyeing a, a shirt uh, this up and coming week for that so I didn't purchase her Bible yet I actually yeah. forgot about yeah. it does she That's need okay. it for the first day no it'll be okay okay um, it'll be okay without it our counselors are ready and they okay. have their small group materials and their activities so it's really so kids can engage and kind of read along and build that habit. But if you don't have one now or whenever you get it, it's fine. Question. Um, for those who choose to bring, uh, send lunch with the kids, how are the lunches stored? They'll be, it needs to be a non-perishable lunch. They won't be refrigerated or anything. They will be stored in the classroom space until lunchtime. Okay. Next question. Will y'all still be doing tie dye for the yes. second session? Yes. Okay. Yes, for our first and second sessioners, your kids uh, will be able to make two. <laughs> yep. Um, I only signed my daughter up for the first ses uh, session because she starts school the second week of August. Now, what if I did want to sign her up for the second session? Will I have to still pay that whole um, payment, or can I just pay for those extra two, those only two weeks she'll spend? Good question. Um, so unfortunately, we we are able to break up the payments to provide. We wanted to be able to provide a payment plan for you guys where it looks like four installments. 
Um, but the way that it's processed is that it would still continue. It would need to be paid all the way through. So it's not a prorated um, um, two weeks. It would still end up charging you for the before, unfortunately. Yep. Thank you. Any other? Um, July 12th. Yep. Um, okay. No more. Yep. For the aftercare. Oh, sorry. For the aftercare, it has to be for that whole week, or can you pick certain days for aftercare? Um, so, like, let's just say if I want to bring my son or you utilize the aftercare Monday through Wednesday, can I just pay Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Or is it you have to pay for the whole week? It would week? be the whole week. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry, we couldn't break it down day by day. Yeah. Okay, good questions. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you guys. You're keeping me on my toes and on a day that I skip coffee. So um, thank you for this, this wake up this morning. Um, again, if you have more questions, um, I know there's a lot of new happening and there's a lot of questions, just especially what we're coming out of in 2020 and the kids you know, just going back to school at the end. So I know there's a lot of feelings going towards this summer. So I just wanna be here to help and support you guys. So even on the front of that parent guide is my information. Um, you can reach me at that number for any questions or send an email um, just to make sure we all have a successful summer together, okay? Um, so I really appreciate you guys coming out today. So I'm going to release you to your campers. Um, so I'm gonna read your child's name for for each group. So I'm gonna start with group one, okay? And if you are in group one, you're gonna, if you hear your child's name, you're gonna head out the door and then people in the hallway will direct you to where you're going, okay? And Bradley. Do you play siblings together because she would be a, a junior? No, it's all age specific, um, unless the request was made um, to have them in a group together. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you wanna talk like you want them together, you you prefer a group change or something like that, like, um, we're yeah. gonna invite you back to the chapel after that. Cause she, she's the, the junior camper, the uh, oh, oh, 14 year old. Oh, so, that's why oh, I was so saying you want her to be a junior camp with her brother? I mean, I really don't, oh, but okay. <laughs> you know, they need to be away from each other. But oh, I was just asking. No, so it's, it's a more of a, once you meet the junior camp counselor director in there, we're gonna see preferences of, you know, the age groups that they would wanna work with this summer, and then we'll get them placed um, before Monday. No problem. Alrighty, okay, so for group one, um, and this is our this is our six year olds here. So just be ready if you have a kid in that age group. So we have um, Jackson Bernard, Kylie Lloyd, Abriella Mondlair, Alexander Rayborn Burn, Delani Stevens, Naya Talley, Paige Adams, Adora Allen. Anna Rose Anderson, Ashton Bailey, Zahara Bankston, Bailey Barr, Caden Bethel, Cadence Bledsoe, Tamira Bridges, William Brown, Amari Burns, Grace Burrell, Justice Cook, Jalen Davenport, Kaya Davis, and Mavis Fitzgerald. And now we're gonna go to group two, okay? Group two. So should they get up and start walking out? Hmm? Should the group one people get up and start walking? Yes, in room? group one, you're going to be headed to the kids zone. And Miss Linda's going to show you how to get there. Okay, so our group two parents, you're going to be going to the adventure zone. Okay, and we have Tyler Haynes, Jacob Holloway, Xavier Johnson, Zion Kimmins, Nasir Kimmins, Parker Nunn, King O'Banner, Christian Aniasia. Taylor Reynolds, Clinton Rivers, Elijah Robinson, Malachi Spears, Bryce Thomas, Rashawn Tucker, Morgan White, Ashton Williams, Messiah Allen, Jalen Antoine, Ivory Asim, Jackson Brown, 
Cameron Brown and Amor Brown Wilkins. You, you're in Tribe 2, and you're going to be in Adventure Zone for your session. Bradley. Okay. Bradley. Because I'm, I'm going to group two now, but I have two kids in different groups. So or, or don't worry about it. I'm sorry. I missed the beginning of that. I have two sons, so you just call me for group two. Mm -hmm. So my other kid, don't worry about don't worry about him right now. Oh, I can I can read off the other one. What's his last name? Holloway. Your other child will be in group four. <laughs> and, yep, you're going to hit both. Yep. So group two is going to be in the adventure zone, and group four is going to um, be meeting here. Here. I have the counselor for group four here. So you can, you can go to group two first in the adventure zone, and then if you want to come back over here for the T-shirt for group four. Group three, and group three will be meeting in the dance studio, which is you make a left and it'll be straight ahead. Okay. Oh. And that is Simone Cheney, Kelston Coleman, Brooklyn Collimore, Tony Davenport, Nehemiah Davis, Dylan Dort, De Nehemiah Franklin, Demise Gardner, Sanaya Green, Jayla Johnson, Keith Johnson, Damian Jones. Sire Jordan, Amara Matthews, Ashley Nash, Mason Palmer, Elijah Ray, Andrew Rayburn, Jackson Walker, Caleb Tate, Eli Teal, Kylan Terrell, and Cassie Tolliver. Okay, you're going to be headed to the band room, and they will direct you in the hallway. Now we're going to grant group four, and group four will stay put here, okay? And that is Chase Smith, Ethan Warren, Doreen Washington, King Webb, Randy White, Genesis Worrell, Kwame Boatneg, Dylan Brown, Devin Cook, Mackenzie Edwards, Tyler Ford, Nia Granger, Patrick Holloway, Nyla Johnson, Caleb Jones, Eva Love, Cameron Mays, Daquan Miller, David, David Okiki, Alana Pearson, Jada Percy, and Makai Randall. All right. Now for group five. Okay. In group five, you will be going to room 135 which people will direct you there, okay? Question behind you, Bradley. And it is, yes. Behind you, Bradley. Yes. If I have a um, son and a nephew, and you didn't call my nephew name, Tristan Wilbon? Wilbon? Yeah. Okay. They're both eight. Eight. Okay. We can talk. Yeah. If you don't hear your child's name called, definitely as soon as I wrap all this up. We can, we can talk really quickly. Okay, so for group five, and you're going to room 135, okay? Um, we have Tony Reynolds, Sanai Scott, Demir Taylor, Frank Turner, Tristan Wilbon, um, Mark Williams, Zion Wilson, Jocelyn Witherspoon, Azara Wooders, JL Antoine, Yana Boatneg, Jaden Bauer,